Few took notice when Steve Grogan joined the New England Patriots in 1975. But by the end of the 76 season, the unheralded fifth round pick had become the talk of the league. He had no regard for his personal safety because when he dropped back in the pocket, he would run and he wouldn't go down. Steve Grogan was Steve Young in 1975, 1976. A quarterback could throw the ball, but you also had to be very, very aware defensively of his great ability to run and the fact that he was fearless. Unlike most scramblers, Grogan ran by design. His 12 rushing touchdowns in 1976 set a league record for quarterbacks and led the surprising Patriots to a division title. Grogan was the toughest football player I ever played with. You get in the huddle with that guy, and you better do something right or he'd call you out. You know, quarterbacks are supposed to be these California attitudes of, oh, do 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 you know. Not nice Steve, man, he would get fired up. I grew up and learned that playing the game, you had to be intense. And just because I was a quarterback didn't mean I couldn't be intense. That intensity included an unquarterback-like penchant for contact. If he got to midfield on a run and a big strong safety was coming up to drive him into the turf, he'd take him on and run him over. He believed that quarterbacks should be football players, not wear a skirt. A couple guys I played with used to accuse me of throwing interceptions just so I could hit somebody. <laughs> but I, honestly, I never did that on purpose. It was the accidental interceptions which raised the ire of Patriot fans. And their wrath over Grogan's inconsistency stung as much as the constant pounding from opposing defenses. The hits kept coming. And after five years and a terrific beating, injuries forced Grogan to limit his running and develop into a more traditional kind of quarterback. My running ability bought me time to learn the passing game. And when I started having knee problems, I was able to evolve into a pocket passer. I think he got more confident in his throwing ability. He got more of a sense of the whole passing game a little bit. And I think age, and he wised up. <laughs> he couldn't have a very long career, uh, you know, running the ball as much as he did. Despite Grogan's success as a passer, he would lose his starting job to young Tony Eason. Grogan waited, and in 1985, he replaced an injured Eason and led head coach Raymond Berry's team to five straight wins. The day Tony got hurt, Raymond said, I think our best chance for success is for you to call what you're comfortable with. And I went on the field and I did that. And I started getting the input from the guys in the huddle. And things just started to click. Strong right formation. And Grogan holds on to his quarterback seat. A keeper play. Grogan scores. A broken leg sidelined Grogan. And as he healed, the Patriots advanced to the Super Bowl with Eason at quarterback. I started getting in Dante Scarnecchi, the special team coach's ear. I said, let, let me cover punts, let me cover kickoffs, something. I gotta say that I played in the Super Bowl. I've waited too long not to be on the field. Grogan would get his chance to play in Super Bowl 20, but his dreams were doused in the sea of Chicago Bears as the dominating 46 defense was simply too much for New England. Grogan would play until 1990. Four years later, he was inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame, a tribute to both his franchise record 16 seasons with the team, as well as his ability to generate victory through his endless passion for the game. I love to play football. I'd still be playing today if they hadn't told me to leave.